don't you get tired of being alone? Ashley. Don't you get sick of yourself? Ashley. Who do you talk to when you're out to dinner? Aren't you tired? I have been single for a dangerous amount of time. Okay, I'm being dramatic. It's been two years. <laughs> Why is a dangerous amount of time when you're in your late 20s? Oh my god, late 20s, bitch. I'm about to be 28. Huh. The longer that I'm single, the more comfortable I get with being single. Today, I'm talking about solitude because it's something that I have learned to master. That's a strong word. I, you know what? Yeah, fuck it. I've learned to master in the past couple years and I think it's important for everyone to be comfortable and confident and content in solitude, whether that means solo dining, doing activities alone, binging a show alone, or just going for a walk. So, you might be wondering, Ashley, how did you become so comfortable in your own company? And I'll tell you. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I acknowledged that just because I'm alone, it doesn't mean I have to be lonely. I've been very lonely in the company of others. In a relationship that I was in in the past, I was extremely lonely. I was very lonely. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was feeling so isolated. It was insane, even when I was right next to the person. And this has happened to me in many relationships, not just a romantic one, but also friendships before. I'd be hanging out with my friend, wondering why I feel so depressed and sad and lonely. And I didn't really take in like, hey, like, this is loneliness. I never acknowledged that feeling. I'll say it again, just because you're alone, it doesn't mean that you have to be lonely. I have had some of the most fun by myself. I think the moment that it really changed for me was when I went to New York alone. I was always really comfortable being alone, I guess. Like maybe not like extremely because I did suffer with social anxiety for a big chunk of my life, but I always had a little bit of peace in being alone because it meant that I could just do whatever I wanted. However, when I went to New York alone, and New York is not far, it's a one hour flight from Toronto, I felt so comfortable with myself. I was sad because I was going through things at the time. I was dealing with some shit, but I was doing that on my own. I was going to eat on my own. I was going to walk on my own. I was exploring the city on my own. I was taking the subway and going to musicals and getting drunk on my own. I was in the hotel room alone. I took the flight alone. Everything was alone. That is solo traveling for you. 10 out of 10 recommend. I hope to do it again one day somewhere farther. I remember there was this trying moment for me and uh, I remember making a video about it in New York, actually. I'll insert a clip. And to really kind of push myself out of my comfort zone, because I am here alone, and this is the first trip I've ever done alone. I hope I can come home and feel refreshed and feel better and feel healed. I will be so happy, but I know that it's all God's timing, so yeah. This moment to me was pivotal because I was acknowledging the feeling that I had, like the feelings of sadness and depression and isolation, and I felt it, and I leaned into it for an hour or two, and then I just got up and I started doing. I started doing things. I started booking excursions. I went to the museum. I went to the sex shop. I went to a musical, and I just like, first of all, met so many cool people, but secondly, I had such amazing experiences on my own. I went into that musical and I sat by myself and got drunk as hell. Drunk. Um, watching Wicked. And I just remember giggling and crying at the end and enjoying it because it was my dream to see Wicked since I was a kid. And just sitting there and I had that moment where I was like, I wanted to like tap my friend next to me and be like, oh my god, it's so good. Like, what did you think of the show? But there was no friend next to me. There was no, it was a stranger. Um, I wanted to do that for a second and then I just kind of decided to just tell myself that and I was like This, this was so good. I had that internal dialogue. Then I started getting comfortable with that internal dialogue Even when I'd hear some tea about something or I would want to express excitement or rant about something I would just have that internal dialogue I think that really kicked in after a breakup of mine because I used to use that person as like my sounding board like I would go through something or have a crazy day or share a funny experience with someone and then I would call the person I was with at the end of the day and be like, oh my god, guess what happened? And then I would tell them and they'd give me a reaction or they wouldn't and then that would be the only way that I processed things. I wouldn't journal about it or 
sit with it on my own and laugh at it on my own. I would tell them, oh my god, guess what happened? This was so shocking, this was blah, I'm so mad. And that would be my way of expressing myself. After that trip to New York, I was like, whoa, I don't need an extra ear or an extra opinion or an extra laugh or someone to laugh with. I don't need any of that. All I need is me. And it was beautiful. So I started going out of my way to experience things alone more often. I think the best part about doing things alone, this is number two, I guess. Are we numbering this? I don't know. But the best thing about doing things alone is when you acknowledge that everything is up to you. If you're solo traveling, you don't have to say, hey, did you want to do zip lining or did you want to do bungee jumping? What do you want to do? You want to zip line? Okay, so you zip line. You only have yourself to think about. You get to be selfish. It's a beautiful thing. To be able to be selfish and unapologetic about being selfish, it can be great. When you don't have to factor in another person's emotions or reactions or consider how they're going to feel, and you just get to go based off of what you want, it's very exciting because you're in full control. Whether that means going to a restaurant and being able to go at happy hour because you're available, but your friend isn't, so you can go. You can go to happy hour between 12 to 3 during the day when she's working. You can go order half the menu and you don't have to share your fries. You don't have to send a text saying, hey, what are you wearing? I'm thinking of wearing a dress. You just wear your dress. Regardless, don't be that person. Wear what you want to wear. Don't worry about what your friends are wearing. Everything is up to you. You're in total control of your day and the way that it goes. If you're in a bad mood, you're allowed to be in a bad mood and it's not gonna affect anybody. If you're in a great mood, no one's gonna bring you down. Why? Because you're alone. It's a beautiful thing. Learn to enjoy it. I remember when I spent Valentine's Day alone, as I often do. <laughs> um, it's like a ritual for me. Every Valentine's Day, I take myself out somewhere and I do something fun or I eat something good. I remember one year I went to a float spa and I got cookies and I got Japanese barbecue. And another year I went to the cafe. I sat around and drank tea and then I went to go get some like gourmet Jamaican food. It was really lovely and then I got some shots. Um, every year I do something on my own for Valentine's Day and it's so fun. Honestly, I might even keep up that tradition when I have a man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But if I'm waking up alone on Valentine's Day, I'll probably still take myself out to breakfast and enjoy that experience and then go out with them for dinner. Go have a nice cute Valentine's Day dinner um, because I feel like we just need to give ourselves that love and that care and that attention and we need to learn to enjoy it. Another way that I really enjoy being alone is by being intentional with the time that I spend with myself. So what I mean by that is, for example, when I went to Chubby's last year, which is like the Jamaican restaurant I went to for Valentine's Day, I remember promising myself I was gonna stay off my phone. So I ate every bite and I just enjoyed every bite and I allowed myself to think and reflect. Solo time really allows you to just be with yourself. You're watching people around you, you're eavesdropping on conversations, you're taking in the interior of the restaurant, the ambiance, you know, you're actually experiencing it. You're talking to the server for a little bit longer because you have the time to do so and they don't feel rushed because they're cutting you and your friend off from some juicy conversation. You get to just be and I think you should accept that rather than distract yourself from it. Maybe the first few times you go out alone, yeah. Use your phone, you know, get rid of that anxiety. But once you get used to it and you realize that nobody actually gives a fuck about you and the fact that you're sitting alone, learn to just enjoy the time for what it is and be intentional with where your thoughts are at and what you're doing and what you're focusing on and what you're thinking about. Sometimes I get my best outfit inspiration from just being out in public, sitting at a coffee shop alone and watching the people on the street wear the cutest ass outfits. Sometimes I get my humor from hearing people's conversations and I'm like, oh, that person's funny. I really like their mannerisms, you know? Sometimes I watch couples and I realize what I don't want in a partner and what I do want in a partner because, because I see that they're pulling the chair out for their girl. Or I see a guy that's on his phone the entire day and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I learn a little bit about what I want and what I don't want. It's kind of interesting. Now I don't always pressure myself to do that because I spend so much time alone. So sometimes I'll be very present and other times I might pop in an audiobook and then focus on the meal while I listen to the audiobook. That's one of my favorite things to do, especially if I go to like K Grill and I'm like grilling Korean food. Um, I'll have a podcast in and I'm just focused on the meat and making sure it's cooked well and seasoning it while I'm listening to like Sophia with an F talk about eating ass for example. <laughs> Another reason why I love being alone is because it helped me overcome my social anxiety. Do this, okay? Next time you're out with your friends, look around the restaurant and scope out who's alone. When you notice someone that's alone, you're gonna realize, huh, 
If I wasn't looking for this person, I probably would not notice that they were alone. And when you do notice that they're alone, what are you gonna think? Reflect on what you're thinking. Are you thinking, oh, why are they alone? Oh my God, they don't have friends? What are they doing? What a loser. No, that's probably not what you're thinking. You're probably like, huh, oh, they're solo dining. I wish I could do that. Nobody cares, and if they do, they're probably watching you with admiration. Not that it matters, because nobody cares and neither should you. Solo dining helped me beat my social anxiety. I'm not joking. I started off by going to the corner booth and facing the whole restaurant in the corner so that I could see what's going on, but nobody could really see me. That was my go-to. Um, then I transitioned to sitting at the bar. The bar is nice because the bartenders are so busy, they're not focusing on you, and you're not facing too many people. So no one's noticing you. The bar is also nice because if you do feel like being social, the bartenders usually want to chat. That's their job. Their job is to talk and to be your therapist. Then I started just allowing whatever seat came to me and I was like, oh cool, you want to put me in the middle of the restaurant? Fuck it, why not? Eventually you stop caring. It really helped me. Now I feel like less people are focusing on me because when you're alone, you have nothing to do but focus on other people and you're gonna realize that you're not really judging much. Like maybe every now and then you might judge like, mm, why is he on his phone for this entire day? Yeah, maybe you will sometimes. Most times you don't care. And if you do, you don't care for more than a minute. Become aware of these facts while you're solo dining and every time it will get easier and easier. I don't know why I'm talking about solo dining so much. I guess because it's like it has to do with being alone. But I mean this in every sense of solitude. Whether you're at a float spa alone, you're at the park alone, you're at the beach, you're at a restaurant, just go out and do something by yourself and see how you feel. Another thing that was really helpful to me was living alone. I think it's something that everybody should experience before they settle down and move in with their partner. If you don't have the funds to do so, don't force yourself. But if you find a way to do it, I highly recommend doing it. I learned so much about myself when I lived alone. So much. I really loved living alone. And I look forward to living alone again one day. I'm sure I will again at some point. I really, really enjoyed it. At first it was really isolating and depressing at times. It can be lonely, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I never get lonely, I do. I do sometimes. That year felt lonely at times. Cooking dinner, breakfast, lunch every day and eating all those meals alone was like, damn, I'm really just gonna sit here alone again? Like, no conversation? But then you learn to fill the silence with your thoughts or with something else. You learn your own habits. You learn if you're actually clean or dirty because you don't really know these things until you move out. You don't know. Maybe you think you're clean and you realize that your roommate was cleaning up after you for the past three years. Maybe you think you're dirty and you realize, oh, I'm not dirty, my sister was dirty. She's the one that was keeping the space disgusting. Maybe you think you're organized, but it turns out this whole time, your ex-boyfriend was the one putting things away when you didn't even realize it. When you live alone, it forces you to be with yourself and see yourself for who you truly are. No one's gonna see your bed. Are you still gonna make your bed every day? How loud do you play your music now that you don't have to consider anybody else's feelings? Little things like that you start to become so aware of because you have no one else to think about at all. Do you actually like doing your dishes daily or do you just do it because you're considerate of the fact that you live with someone else? You'll learn all these things when you live alone. I highly recommend it before you settle down. I am so serious. It's something that I think everyone should do, but a lot of people won't do it, especially in this economy. Oh my God. <laughs> in this economy, oh, oh my God. Something that I always think about is uh, this quote that I heard, I forget the exact quote, but basically it was saying that, what if you treated yourself the way that you treat um, somebody that you love? So I'm sure when it comes to your girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, treat them with the utmost respect, care, compassion, love, patience. You massage their back when they're in pain. You sing them lullabies before bed. I don't do that shit, but maybe you do. <laughs> you make them soup when they're sick. You make them tea when they're feeling unwell. You bring them a sleeping pill when they're tired. Treat yourself like you would treat your partner. Treat yourself like you would treat your child. Give yourself that care, compassion, and love. Even though no one's holding you accountable to it, do it for yourself. Listen, I don't always treat myself the way that I should be treated. I won't lie to you. But when I do, I thrive. I thrive. And you know what? You should try it sometime. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you resonated with this video and helped you out, please leave a comment or a like or subscribe. Do whatever, whatever you want to do. My kitty just sneezed. If you want to see him, he looks so cute. This little boy is one years old now. My little boy is one. He loves doing this. He always stretches out when he goes on my, on my arm. 
This little boy is one years old. Um, yeah, he's so sweet. Animals don't count, by the way. They do, sorry, they count. Animal lives matter. What I mean is, you can be alone with a little kitty and you're still alone, or a dog, or a hamster. Or a, um, what's that thing? Hedgehog. My friend just got a hedgehog. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but it's cute. You can be alone with a little shy shy. Oh, my baby. Anyways, happy birthday, shy, my little Capricorn. And um, go do something alone. I challenge you to three things. Okay, this is your homework. Number one, go to a coffee shop alone for an hour and don't use your phone. Talk to people, look out the window, maybe bring a book, but don't use your phone. Don't talk to anybody on your phone. Um, your second piece of homework is to take yourself out to a restaurant or bar. Have a drink, have a dinner, do whatever you want. Your third piece of homework is to go do an activity alone, whether it's a pottery class, a dance class, a night at the museum for a couple hours. Go do something alone. Wow, he's getting real comfortable. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me put him down. Say bye. Do those three things and then come back to me. Show yourself some love and some care, okay? Be your own best friend. With that being said, I'm out. See you next time.